View Teleprompter create videos you're proud of. Easily trim your video by selecting the words where you want to start and end. Color your presentation with automatic subtitles and highlighting keywords. Add your brand logo. Add music for an emotional touch. Add your contact info on an animated business card on all your videos. Easily replace green screen with an image or a video loop. Stand out with a web page with your logo, your video at the center, and personalized button for visitors to interact. It's one tap to simultaneously upload your videos on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. Always know what to say next with the Big View Teleprompter. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of... Uh, well, is it an episode? No, it's not an episode. It's, it's the Big View Learning Session. I'm so glad to be with you today. I'm your friend... Your uncle, your nephew, your promoter, something to you. Robert Kennedy III, RK3, that's me. And welcome to this episode where we're going to be talking about the power of storytelling. So glad you're here. I'm so glad that you're here. Misty, I see you in the comments. If you're in the comments, just go ahead and type your name. Type where you're from so that I can give you a shout out really quickly as we get into this. So let's jump on in. If you have a question during today's episode, make sure that you type the letter Q before your question. It's going to be fantastic. Who am I? Who am I? Who am I? Robert Kennedy III. I love working with Big View because not only is it a fantastic company, it's a fantastic software. If you're a content creator and somebody who is looking to make a difference with your clients and show up like a professional, then Big View is a tool that you want to use. I work with a lot of real estate professionals, real estate agents, and I share with them Big View as a tool that can help them to show up like quality professionals on camera without having to figure out what you have to say all the time. Big View is a tool that I share with them to make sure that they're able to do that. If you want to get in touch with me, head on over to get on get in touch with RK3 and get in touch with RK3.com and we can get connected there. So I'm going to introduce my host in just a moment, but let me see who we have in the house so that we can do a few call outs. I see Paul Kirkpatrick from, oh, Paul's my neighbor in Laurel, Maryland. Fantastic. I'm in Beltsville, Paul, right below there. All right. Misty is from Charlotte, NC, North Carolina. We have Elizabeth Wynn from Jacksonville, Florida. We got Obi from Dubai. Come on, Obi. I love it. Uh, Qatar Airlines. I like it. So if you have any thoughts, any questions, we're going to be checking that chat ra quite regularly. If you want a gift, hmm, we've got some of those. I want you to stay around till the end of the episode because we're going to be sharing with you a giveaway from our author, from our presenter today. All right. So let's jump in and let's learn a little bit more about our presenter today. His name is Jeffrey Klein. And Jeffrey, uh, we're going to talk today about the science of story, how to communicate more effectively through the power of storytelling. If you don't know, I am, I, I love storytelling. It's a, it's, a, it's a core piece of what I do. And so we're going to walk through some of that today. Jeffrey's a TEDx speaker. He is an adjunct professor. He's a visual content producer. And he's the author of the upcoming book, the content beast. Yes, without further ado, let me bring up to the stage our presenter for the day, Jeffrey Klein. Jeffrey, where are you, my friend? How you doing? Hey, Robert. Uh, great to be here. Thanks, for everyone, for coming. I'm uh, based currently outside of Philadelphia, where I was born and raised. I love it. Excellent. 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 So let's jump in. I, I don't want to just kind of ask you the regular questions, but we do workshops and things like that from time to time. And a lot of times when we start out a workshop, we're looking for a way to connect with our audience. And so we ask them to do some, do some things, icebreakers. Let me, let's ask you your icebreaker today. What, what is a fun fact about you that nobody knows that we don't know? Well, you may not know this. Uh, so I, I do an exercise where I tell people to try and craft a story in six words. So I'm going to tell you my fun mm. fact as a story in six words. So ready? John Legend sang at my wedding. How's that for a wow. fun fact? Like really John Legend or was it just you were playing a CD? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, live. Don't tell us that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was the real John Legend. Actually, at the time, he wasn't even John Legend yet. He was before he became the EGOT huge star that he is. Uh, I got wow. lucky 
that one of my close friends is one of his close friends and uh, we had heard his demo album and I'm like, hey, and my wife Nita and I were like, let's have his song. And so we had him perform one of his songs called or, um, called um, The Sun Comes Up, which has not been released um, publicly. It's on his demo album. And then he sang two Stevie Wonder covers and he was amazing. So best wedding present we wow. got was from my friend Jackson, who, who set it all up. Wow, that's that sounds like something you can sell later on. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so let's let's jump in a little bit, my friend. You you do some work with storytelling. How'd you start with that? Well, it depends on how far you go back. Unofficially, I've been doing it since I was a little kid, and and I used to love to tell stories. My parents, I love movies, and I used to go to the movies, and my parents would joke it would take me as long to tell them about the movie than if they were just going and seeing it themselves. Now, I like to think that yeah. in the time since then, I've I've been able to craft the way you tell stories a bit better, but I, I just think there's something about stories and how it connects us. And so for me, it's that communication piece, but ultimately it's really about creating those connections between people. And I think the shortest line between that, those two people is a story. Fantastic. So we talked about a giveaway earlier. Can you clue us in? What, what's the secret? What's the giveaway? Uh, yeah, I actually have a little slide to tease you. Um, if uh, we bring up that slide, um, it will showcase that store, that giveaway. If my slide will work. Well, we don't want to give me one second to make sure we can. Oh, there we go. Giveaway. So uh, I was thinking about what I could do. That would be fun. Something that I do. So I produce video and animation. So I thought it'd be nice for people here today to get a piece of content. I'm writing a book on the content piece. So what I'm giving away is an actual logo animation. So if you have a logo and wow. you wanna do a presentation or, or use it in social media, I will create one. And so I'll talk about that and how you can uh, be entered to, to get a logo animation created for you or your business. So that's my giveaway for you all. Fantastic, fantastic. So I do a lot of work with organizations uh, now, particularly in the real estate industry, but I used to do a lot of work with organizations where they had to present technical information to their audiences, both internally and externally. And I found that not only were people having trouble with speaking from a confidence standpoint, but they were having trouble with making sure the information was remembered or let me use another word memorable <laughs> so mm -hmm. let's let's start there why, why are people why are organizations having trouble with making their information memorable well i'm gonna uh in a surprise move share a story with you to answer that question <laughs> <laughs> so uh i have some slides that we could put up because you know all good stories uh, they start with that magic once upon a time. So this is a story I'm going to share about. It took place back in my hometown of Philadelphia back in 1918. So a couple days ago. And it had to do with a, a young man who was graduating from high school named Charles. And Charles was a math whiz. Um, and so Charles was given um, free scholarships to several universities. Unfortunately for Charles, he couldn't afford to go to college for free. His family was really poor, and so he's too poor to go for free. Now, I'm just plugging in because my computer just said it was going to die if I didn't, and that's not part of the story, but it is an important piece because I don't want to lose you. So here we go. We got Charles, who's unable to go to school for free. So instead of going to college, poor Charles ended up going to work in a factory, and not what his dream was at all, but he had sometimes you have to do what you have to do. And one day, Charles' friend Dave came in and he was holding some books. And Charles said, uh, Dave, what are those books? And Dave said, well, I'm going to Temple Law School at night. And Charles said, well, well how much is it? And Dave said, it's $32 a term. And even back in 1918, that was a pretty good deal. So Charles decided to apply to law school. He got in, even though he never went to college. And in 1934, he broke a record in Pennsylvania. He became the youngest lawyer in Pennsylvania history to become a judge. He was a judge for over 50 years. And the record stood until his son broke it at age 32. 
So what I like to share with people, I did go to law school, but I did not follow the tradition of my grandfather, Charles, or my father, Richard. Now, I tell that story because it's something I'm really proud of, but I could have just come out and told you the information. My father and grandfather were judges. I could tell you the technical information, the data. But what I'm hoping to share with you is that you will see that you, my, the fact that my father and grandfather were judges is something that you're going to remember much more than if I just gave you the information. And that's what the studies show. You know, there's a, a, a statistic that your stories are 22 times more memorable than just the facts alone. So it's pretty powerful. Awesome. What do you think? Awesome. So, you, you, yeah, I, I, listen, I love it. I'm, I am I not only love that we shared a story, but I think it's, it's especially interesting when you're able to see graphical or visual representation right alongside it that that supports what what you're sharing so you weren't sharing with us slides that had a lot of words or content or you didn't have the entire story on one slide you kind of brought us along on on this journey so you just mentioned this thing about stories people are 22 times more likely to remember mm -hmm. facts or or data that are wrapped in stories so tell us a little bit more about the science behind storytelling and, and why it matters. Yeah, and uh, I, again, I hope you, know, you may see a pattern uh, evolving, which is I'm going to tell a story to answer your question. But so what I tell the, the beginning, it's about, yes, yeah, story matters. But what I love about this is that science actually proves it. And so the story I, I refer to as the brain story or the story on story, it has to do with this professor, Uri Hassan, who at the time was a neuroscience at Princeton University. And Professor Hassan was an expert at communication and connection. And he wanted to find out how the brain responded depending on what input it got. And so he did an experiment. And what he found was that communication is all about brain chemistry. And so here's the experiment that he did. He had two groups of people. He had one group that were given lots of information, data, facts, figures, and one group that was told a story. And he connected them all up to be able to monitor their brain activity. Now, what happened is the first group got, oh, my God, did they get a lot of information. They had, this is the kinds of slides that you were talking about that I don't recommend anyone use that I often refer to as death by PowerPoint. Uh, so I believe in using visual communication, but not this kind. This is something that can really uh, damage your ability to communicate. But what they found was the people that were given the data and information, two parts of their brains activated, the Broca's area and the vernix area. And these two parts of your brain are super important because they control the meaning decoding. So in order for someone to understand what you're saying. But at the same time, those people who were told a story, their brain activity was very different. Not only did the Broca's and the Vernix light up, but so did the rest of their brain. And what was interesting about it was that the parts of their brain that lit up were the parts of the brain that they would use if they were experiencing the story. So it was kind of like virtual, you know, a, uh, they were vicariously experiencing the story. And there's a, there's a concept that was developed called neural coupling. And what happens is that the brain of the speaker and the brain of the listener from a brain activity perspective mirror one another. And what that means is that if I tell you a story about me kicking a ball, your motor cortex activates. If I tell you a story about the sweet smell of fresh baked cookies, your olfactory uh, will activate. So it's a way of getting to the people on a deeper level. Now there's also a rise in two hormones among others, but two important ones, cortisol and oxytocin. Um, anyone know what these are? Robert, you familiar? Um, yeah, they're cortisol hormones. Cortisol or oxytocin? They're hormones. Do you know what they're responsible for? Are feeling good, getting you excited. Um, there you go. Yeah, those, those things. Yeah. yeah, so cortisol, the stress, the fight or flight hormone, and... Oxytocin is love hormone. Now, why is this important when you're trying to communicate with someone? Well, 
you want to get someone's attention, and we're going to talk about that a little bit. And you want to be able to connect with them emotionally, which people talk about in marketing and, and story is the most powerful way to connect that way. So you have an increase in these. So what are the results? Well, the study showed, and I, I, I quoted the 22, which was done in a different study. But from this study, what they found was there was an increase of 20 to 40 percent in both understanding and retention. So it was memorable in a way that you would actually understand what someone was talking about and you would remember it. And so from that perspective, if you're trying to communicate something to someone and you want to be able to make sure that they understand what you're saying and remember it, story is your answer. So throughout, I'm gonna share some action steps. And so the action step here is real simple. Tell more stories uh, with the bonus step of keep watching to learn more. So that's the kind of yeah. the science of story in a nutshell in terms of why it's so much more powerful when you want to get people to understand and remember what you're talking about to use a story. So let's let's bring a question up here because in the comments here, OB Properties is asking, is it ideal to start our content with Once Upon a Time? Because they were discouraged to do their content based on storytelling strategy because they, they were... They were told that this this conventional style it's not okay. So let's let's dig into that. When with corporations yeah. especially, a lot of times they think storytelling is yeah, it's fluffy, it's it's touchy feely. Right. So they want to get to the meat or the data, the yeah, statistics. Well, well, Tell you, us a little bit about and, and, and that. Yeah, I think the important thing to recognize about that study was we're not saying facts figure data is unimportant. It's really important. It's yeah. not a this or that. It's the combination. The idea is that you're sharing a story where you incorporate all those important facts and figures that people need to know. Now, in terms of it being soft or fluffy or, or now the once upon a time is a little corny. I get that. And, and one of the things you'll, you'll hear me talk about is you got to know the audience and understand how they'll respond. But in terms of using stories as a strategy, I will back that up 100% all day, every day. Um, mm -hmm. There is studies that were done that when people say to someone, let me tell you a story, or did you hear the story about even using the word story or the once upon a time, which is a trigger, our brains yeah. change. Right. Right? We have heightened awareness because we, we as human beings are hardwired for story. So even the mention of let me tell you a story about how we increased our, you know, uh, customer acquisition over the last 12 months, and then you go through it, even if you're representing the data in a way that's narrative, you're going to be more effective. There's just, that's what all the studies have shown, and it continues to be the case. Um, and again, there's scientific basis for how our brains work, how yeah. we learn about things, how we uh, respond to things. Um, so yeah, I definitely think, yeah, may, maybe the once upon a time may be a little corny and, and not, but you have to find out how you present it. What I'm su suggesting is that if you're going to present information alone, you're going to be less effective in communicating effectively than if you find a way to share it in a narrative story form. Yeah. So let's let's dig in a little further. What what examples do you have in, in the business world of how story is used by certain by businesses? Yeah. Again, I, I love that it's not just me that feels this way, but they're actually big brands that have a leverage story. And, and so here are some examples. So Mot Motorola uh, has hired improv actors to come and share with their executives how to creatively come up with stories on the fly. Uh, Procter & Gamble um, has actually hired directors to come and help their executives. Both Nike and Kimberly Clark have actual corporate storytelling programs as part of their onboarding. Uh, yeah. And Nike for years, I think he's still there, but has a chief storytelling officer. So that important, and I just saw air, and you see the story behind Nike. You know, they've lived and breathed their story inside their organization. I think that's important. It's not just the story you're telling out there. It's a story that you're telling to everyone inside your organization so that everyone is on the same page uh, is really yeah. important. But 3M is always my favorite. So 3M banned bullet points in presentations for their executives a number of years ago and instead trained people on the corporate narratives. So they actually said, no, 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 forget these bullet points. We're now gonna share it in a way that's gonna be more effective because they have learned that telling stories would in fact help people. So yeah, I, and more and more you'll see, whether it's you're watching advertising or just you know, getting corporate culture, they're starting to recognize that building 
that internal story and that external story is the best way to share the value you have for someone else to your customers. Yeah. Yeah. I love, I love that because there, there are a lot of companies. I'll bring up another company, Warby Parker for people who wear glasses. Mm -hmm. If you go to their website and you look on their about page, their about is not just that we started in 1952, right. their website, their about page says that the founders of the company went on a camping trip several years ago and they, one of them lost their glasses <laughs> and these were college students. And for the entirety of the camping trip, he didn't have glasses. And then throughout the rest of the semester, he didn't have glasses because glasses were super expensive. So their origin story for the company now says, we, st we believe that glasses, getting glasses shouldn't be expensive. And that's the reason why the company exists. So they're built upon a story. So tell us a little bit more about storytelling because an origin story on the website is one thing, but coming up with stories every day to communicate or to convince or influence people, that's a little bit of a different thing. Tell us a little bit about how we can do that. Well, before I jump into the how, I want to uh, give you some context of mm. why storytelling is more important now than ever. Because yeah. storytelling has been done for thousands of years, and some people have done it in, uh, in their companies. You know, Nike's been around a long time. But right now, we're all suffering from two other pandemics. Uh, I know we went through one, but now we've got two more that we're competing with. And I think this is the reason why it's so important to understand how we help that. So what are the two? One is infobesity and the other is short <laughs> attention spans. Yeah. So yeah, infobesity, I, I don't I, I didn't come up with it. It's another word for information overload, but it is just a lovely word. So what is infobesity? Well, I love this quote. We're drowning in information while starving for wisdom. Wow. You know, there is more information now than there has ever been. It's being generated at a meteoric pace. Uh, in fact, there's a company that does something every year, there's a couple companies that do it now, about what happens every minute online. And you can see this is all, once a day, I'll show you some of the highlights. So on Facebook, there are 2 million active people every day. On TikTok, there's 170 million videos are watched. We're sending 231 emails in the day and we're sending 16 million text messages. It's ridiculous. So we are bombarded all day, every day with information and we can't really deal with it. Now, that would be bad enough, but we got another problem. Oh, so, which is that, so all the data has been created and, and this is a, a couple years out. So 90% of all the data has been created in the last two years and that's now getting smaller. We're just creating data and information so fast. Um, but as I said, there's a, an even bigger problem. So, you know, oh, I don't have a short attention. Oh, oh, look, a kitten. Yeah, see, we get distracted so quickly by things, shiny objects, because our attention spans continue to dwindle. They did a study back in 2000 where they found the average attention span of a human was 12 seconds. The attention span of a goldfish is nine seconds. Today, they anticipate that the human attention span is eight seconds. So Robert, let me share that in a different way. Human attention spans are shorter than that of a goldfish. Well, I'm wondering inside of that, um, how, how did they actually measure the attention span of a goldfish? But anyway, you can keep <laughs> Well, you know, you in my book, I, I address that piece. I address the okay. of this study. But, okay. so, but, but the reality is that it, it's really, you know, and I believe in a lot of data that you take it for the concept, not the specific. And so the point is that with all this information, we're on our phones constantly. We continue to be distracted and our attention is getting shorter and shorter. And so the question is, how do we treat infobesity and short attention spans? I think you'll be shocked to hear my answer, which is with a story. Mm. Because a story enables you to cut through the noise of all those things that are happening in order to stand out, in order to capture that attention, you know, to have that cortisol level, you're getting people to pay attention by telling stories. Uh, yeah. So now let's talk about, you know, how do you do it, right? You wanted to know, so, okay. Cause I, I usually think about that. That's why story matters. You know, I've given the right. science and the data and I've shown you some examples and people are like, okay, Jeffrey, I get it. Story matters. Now help me tell better ones. 
And that's kind of, you know, the, the, the end piece is like, okay. And the good news is I have some tips. Now they're high level. I refer to these as the ABCs of stories, but it, if, you, if you follow these as a starting point, you'll be in really good shape. So what does the A stand for? You wanna take a guess, Robert? Anyone in the chat wanna put, what's the important A in terms of telling stories? Um, and you know, I, there's a lot of different ones and I've gotten lots of different answers, but there's an A I'm looking for. You need you know, to keep in mind the A in order to tell effective stories. You wanna have a guess, Robert? Uh, I I think because I'm a storyteller, I'll okay. Let's jump into it. I'm, I'm gonna say audience. Of... I'm gonna say audience. See, you're a story guy, exactly. You got to know your audience. And my little yeah. graphic is, you're not gonna try and sell snow to the Eskimos. They got plenty of snow. So you got to know your audience in order to figure out what kind of story is gonna resonate with them. And so I think it's the type of thing that we don't think about as much. And you know, I have unfortunately a secret to share with you. Don't be upset. Nobody cares about what you what you can do, Robert. <laughs> Nobody cares yeah. about what the business can do. People only care about what you can do for them. And when I see some businesses promoting themselves saying, we're the best, we won this award and we've done so great. And I'm like, I don't care. Cause I listen to WII FM, yep. the most popular radio station. What's in it for me? No one cares about your business until you, the business shows that they care about what can be done for them. You know, it's the type of thing where people, um, and it seems logical, but yet so many people don't do that. So when you're telling your story, the story isn't your story. It's about your audience. They're the hero of the story. And I, I, you know, I'm an adjunct professor and I came up with this concept a few years ago. And I always tell people when I do presentations, if you don't remember anything else, remember the 11th commandment. And what is the 11th commandment? Know thy audience. Really simple stuff here, but so important. You got to know your audience in order to be able to communicate them in a way. And I have a, I have a really good secret for all of you too. There's a tool that we've all got that can help us do this, help us understand our audience. And it's not chat GPT or AI. It's something that's been around all that's for a while now. And we all have them. We all have them. And no, it's not your phone. It's your ears. Part of knowing your audience is listening because listening leads to learning. So if you're looking to get to know your audience, you got to listen up, take in that information, and then you'll be able to learn about them so that you can benefit from the more you know them, the better you can connect with them when you're telling a story. So here's my action step for you people. Write down everything you know about your audience. And you may think, I, I, you'd think you know your audience because oh, yeah, I know who my audience is. Who? Be specific. And then the bonus step, you know, a lot of marketers will create these things called a buyer persona, which is a fictional version of your ideal client. And you think about who they are, what kind of work do they do? What's their income? Where do they live? What are their interests, the demographics, the psychographics? The more you know about who your audience is, the more likely you will be able to craft messaging that's going to connect with them. All right, Robert. We got a B. Right. B. What's this? Uh, we know your audience, and then we got to be something. We have to be um, authentic. Oh, okay. And um, I always have to say, I have to be authentic with you, Robert. This is technically another A because it's authenticity. So I've tried <laughs> over the years to try and come up with a B for what authenticity is. The best I came up was believable, but it's not as good. It's not as good as authentic. So for now, yeah. I'm just going to cheat and be transparent because by sharing with you that this is really an A, not a B, I am being authentic. And so it's really important. Yep. Uh, and, I, and I think, again, in the, in the way we are now, in the world that we're in now, it's hard to suss out what's real and what's not uh, in lots of different contexts. So are you willing to play a little game with me, Robert? Let's go. All right, and you at home or wherever you may be can play along too. So I'm writing a book and there are lots of books out there on business and other things. Um, here's some book covers. And Robert, I want you to tell us is it either Reddit or Shredit. Reddit means it's a real book. 
Shred it means no fake book. All right. So here we got go. Got it. Manager in shorts. Is this real? Uh, Reddit or shred it? I'm going to say Reddit. Reddit. It is, in fact, a real book. I think they could probably use some help on the cover. Just my own thing. I think. Uh, but yes, that is, in fact, a real book. All right. No BS leadership. It's a family show, right? <laughs> no BS leadership. Yeah. I, I, I've seen that one. So I'm going to say Reddit. I know that's a real one. Oh, you see, you're so clever. Um, all right, here, let's let's see if we can get you. Leaders, look up. Read it or shred it? Um, that seems real. <laughs> yeah. It looks, good. the cover looks familiar. It's not. It's made up. Okay. <laughs> uh, surrounded by idiots. Read it or shred it? I'm going to, you know what? There's a friend of mine that wrote, a book called how not to be a jerk at work. Um, so I, this, I wouldn't be surprised if this is a book. It is. So in fact, book. Got you. That is correct. <laughs> Bold leadership. Um, this shred. looks like a book. I don't know if I would read it because it's not particularly, uh, the title doesn't really grab boring. me. But... Boring. It's a real boring book as well, but actually no, it's not a book. It was made up. Okay. I created it. Got it. <laughs> uh, the creative leader. Reddit oh, yeah. That's got to be a real one. Uh, it is not. That's uh, I made that up. Really? I that okay. Myself. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, and I love this one. How to be top banana. Ernie Street. Um, I could say a whole lot about that. How to be top banana. I mean, yeah, that looks like a book somebody would write. Yeah, no, Ernie Street. It's Ernie from Sesame Street. That's where the, the author's from. <laughs> Got it. Well, I th it did ring a bell. <laughs> All right. The Content Beast by Jeffrey Klein. Okay. Read it or shred it? I think I recognize that name. I think I recognize that name. I think I do. So let's go with Reddit. Well, uh, it's Although neither. It's, probably... it's a trick question. It will exist. Okay. This is okay. my book. It's hopefully coming out. Uh, fourth quarter but i'm almost done writing it and then we got to go through all the stuff but yes my point of all this is that you know it's really not as easy as you think to know what's what's re really authentic and what's not there's a lot of ways to trick people and if you trick someone when you're telling your story your business story if you're not authentic and genuine with people in your communication and your messaging they you may fool them but when they find out you're in big trouble and you know the fake it till you make it doesn't make sense you know there's 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 a, a limit to when that should be used because if people feel like you aren't being authentic and authenticity is super important now we all yeah. care about like people being authentic and so how do you become authentic well the way i would suggest you become authentic is understand why you do what you do you talked about warby parker these big brands understand the importance of understanding what you do, what you do. And when I'm a big fan of Simon Sinek, he has a book called Start With Why, which is going to be my action yeah. step. But it's really about your purpose and your beliefs. Every organization, when you think about their origin story, you got to think, what gets you up in the morning? Because people are buying why you do what you do, not what you do. Right. And so the action step here is real simple. Write down, why do you do what you do? And then the bonus step is, there's a book, but I would recommend the TED Talk, Start With Why, Simon Sinek. It's fantastic. Um, and it, it really showcases the importance of understanding what you do. All right. So we got the A and the B. You know, we got all, your audience and being authentic. We got a C left. And C is not for cookie, even though I referenced Sesame Street earlier. C yeah. is about connecting with your audience. And those two graphics are, are elements to show you. How can you connect with your audience? Well, we talk about neural coupling and, and how when we tap into people's senses, their brain actually activates that sensory cortex. So we have um, to understand how can we connect with people in order to be effective? Because when you think, when you tap into emotion, you know, that is where it really matters. And I love this quote, people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did. Right. But people will never forget how you made them feel, my Angelou. And I, that's one of my favorite quotes because 
That's the goal. Get people to feel something. Because stories are kind of emotional currency, not in the you know, a dirty way, but in, in an important way. Stories are emotional currency for you to connect with who you want to connect with. Because um, data itself doesn't change our behavior. You know, if they did, we'd all be thin and in shape and we would eat well because we all know the things. But it's really the emotions that get it. And so when you tell a story, you're tapping yeah. into those emotions, which enables people to then do it. So, Ken, last action step here. Write down how your audience feels before and after their experience with your brand, with your organization. You know, you want to think about, because customer experience is everything. If someone has a good customer experience with you, guess what? They come back, they tell a friend. They have a bad experience. So if you can think about, okay, what is it the person's going to experience when they interact with us before and after? You can use that in terms of crafting your stories. You know, think yeah. of the senses. And if you can engage the senses in that way, great. Uh, I'll give you one yeah. example of, of sensory. There's a hotel in Cape May, and I think other hotels do this too, but that actually has a little machine pumping out scent, a vanilla mm -hmm. scent. So when you come in, you're having a sensory experience the moment you walk up into the hotel. Pretty powerful. That experience like, oh, this smells really good in here. Uh, and I'm not suggesting you all go and find a brand scent, but it is something that people do. Um, so that's kind of the A, B, and C of um, how to tell stories. Um, yeah. A so lot of people wanna... wonder about, you know, sort of, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, Robert. Yeah. Well, I, I see the, I'm just kind of looking at the chat here and I see a couple of questions that are similar. Um, and I'm going to say that it kind of comes from the fact that, now, you, you mentioned short attention spans, but now, especially on social media, we've got stories, we've got reels, we've got TikToks, we've got YouTube shorts. It seems like we are at this space where we're wanting to get information across and do it in a short period of time. Storytelling, we don't think about that as this short thing. So how do I use stories in a in a short period? um period of time so i'll ask it the way that ob properties is asking how do we manage to produce a short and precise content using storytelling techniques yeah and i think again it's it's part of it is about the structure so mm -hmm. um i will actually share a little tool um that i developed to do just this and so if we share the slide i'll, I'll go through it um so I developed something for businesses called the story pad. And this is a tool that you can apply to pretty much any business. And so the question is, how do you quickly get someone to pay attention in a short time, whether it's a reel or it's a you know graphic or whatever it may be? Use the story pad. So we all know if you go back to, you know, you want to think of story, a beginning, a middle, and an end. That's a good story. It's been the way it's been going for a long time. It's still the way to do it. So when you start with the story pad, you start with the P is the beginning, A is the middle, D is the, is the end. So what's the P? The P is the problem or the pain of your audience. Again, we know we gotta know our audience and start with them. So we need to start with the problem. And I'll give you a couple examples in a second. But you start with the problem of your audience, that's how you're gonna grab their attention. Because if mm -hmm. you're talking about a problem that I have, I'm gonna pay attention. If you talk about a problem that I don't have, I won't. And if you're just talking about how great your business is, I told you, I don't care what you do. If you don't talk about me, I'm out. So you have to start with the problem. Then once you've grabbed their attention, because you've been talking about what matters to them, you then can answer that problem with your product or service. So you have a problem and I've got the answer. Now, a lot of companies stop there. You have a problem, I have an answer. But the D is actually critical in my opinion. So the right. D stands for the difference it makes in their lives or in their business. It's the impact. So it's, you have a problem and we have a solution. And when you engage with our solution, this is what life looks like. This is the transformation that our business can help you do. So let's look at two examples. So you have a restaurant. How do we apply that? You have a new restaurant in town, you wanna to get people's attention. Well, we know what the problem is, right? Your customers are hungry. They want something to eat. So you got to say, okay, that's the problem. So now we need to give them a solution. Oh, do you have a problem? Don't worry. 
we have this new awesome restaurant. We've got outdoor dining. We have the answer for you. And what's the difference? The difference in life is you're going to have a great dining experience. So very simple. You know, are you hungry? Come to Joe's. We have great food and service and you'll, it'll, you know, leave with a smile on your face. I'm, I'm, you know, uh, riffing a bit here, but that's, so again, start with the problem. What's your answer and how does it impact them? I'll give you one other example. And, you know, I went to law school. I'm not a lawyer, but people who actually do this pretty well are personal injury lawyers. I know they get a lot of flack for being ambulance chaser, but you've been on the subway or on, you've seen the buses, you see the problem. Have you been injured in an accident? You're like, well, I haven't, so I don't care. And that's good. You're qualifying your people. But if I have been in an accident, or I know someone's been in an accident, I'm like, oh, yeah, I have been in an accident. Well, don't worry. You can come to Kennedy and Klein, and our legal experience will help you. And so Kennedy and Klein has the answer for when you've been in an accident. And what's the difference it makes? We get you. You won't be rich. You'll get compensated. <laughs> so, again, it's really simple. Keep it simple, people. You don't need to go crazy. You're starting with someone's problem or their pain, what keeps them up at night. You're providing the service or the solution to what they do, that answer, and then you're showcasing to them how it's going to make a difference in their life. So there we have it, the ABCs. Know your audience, be authentic, and connect with your audience by using the story pad. I love it. What do you I think, Rick? I... Say that again? I said, what do you think? Yeah, I love guy? it. I'm Like I said, I'm a... I'm a... I'm a fan of storytelling, so I, I really, I really love the process here. And I think the example of using the law firms and how they they structure their 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 ads or their commercials now has us thinking a little bit differently about what commercials are actually doing when we watch TV. Right? It's not just chucking information out. There's a formula. There's a format. There's a structure that they're walking through. So is it just about, okay, every time that I need to give some information out, do I just use the pad formula? Do I just tell a story? What is the thing, what else is there that that would help me support this or, or what else might make a difference yeah. in, in how I tell stories? So, you know, obviously there's lots of different elements that are important in the story. I've given you the three basic ones I think are really gonna level you up. But I, I, you know, yeah. I give you the ABCs. I like to give everyone a bonus letter. You want a bonus letter, Robert? So I'll give you a bonus letter. So if you put up the slide, you'll see my bonus letter for telling better stories is V. <laughs> now, I teach at Temple University, which people may not know is in Philadelphia. And one of their rivals is Villanova. And this V is not oh, for Villanova, even though it is the Villanova V. I live in Villanova, uh -huh. so that's kind of why. I, but it, what does the V stand for in terms of... Um, telling effective stories. So it's about visual. So I yeah. love one of the reasons I was so excited about coming and talking uh, for Big View is because they get it. They're about visual storytelling. That's what Big View is all about. It's about how can you capitalize in that storytelling. So why is visual mm -hmm. so important when you're crafting these stories? Well, unfortunately people don't read or they don't read as much. We're a scan culture. Remember we got those short attention spans. It's some of those things we can't. And so, Again, going back to our brain, the brain processes visual content 60,000 times faster than text. We can see a website and bang, we can see a little visual graphic and know what that means. It's incredible. Okay. Um, and then you talked about this, about how do you be memorable? Well, they've done studies that have shown after three days, you remember about 10% of what you read, about 20% of what you hear, and about 30% of what you see. But even better than that, you see about, I think it's 70% or so of what you see and hear. And that's why visual is so important. Um, and I'm gonna do a little example with you, Robert. And, and again, if you all wanna uh, chat in the answer, if you think you know what it is, but I'm gonna prove to you how simple knowing how graphics work. So you, as you said, I didn't have a lot, I don't have a lot of words on my slides because I think you can learn all the stuff from little graphics. So this is a little game I call, what movie is that? So I've done okay. these movies in, in four graphics. So we have a spaceship, a telephone, a bicycle on the moon, and a spaceship. <laughs> See, this is, this is not fair right here, right? Because if you were born <laughs> after 1995, 
You have no chance at this. <laughs> I disagree. I think people know enough about ET and the zeitgeist to know that it's ET. All right, here's one here's that's from the same time period. So you got boxing gloves, a statue, some boxers, and a guy who seems happy about it. Uh, Adrian. Adrian. Exactly. Yeah. Rock, yeah. Rocky, right? Rocky. So um, I'm from Philly, so it's got to be Rocky. All right, we got a ship yeah. and a couple iceberg and and then a woman at the end now i always joked about this one because of course everyone will say the real answer which is robert titanic titanic and um, but I've, I've played with people like, no no it's battleship potamkin did you see that but well, no it is in fact <laughs> Titanic. <laughs> all right yeah. last one so oh i didn't put it in there that's such a shame all right the last one was basically um a burger someone who's hungry and then you see uh, a video game console, and it's for Hunger Games, but um, somehow it didn't make oh. it in my slide deck. But my point here is okay. that with four little graphics, you guys could quickly get what it was rather than me trying to say, okay, well, it's a story about a guy who's gambling and then he wins tickets to a ship and then he goes on the ship. Like, yeah, the movie's long, but my point is that visual storytelling is a shortcut for our mm -hmm. overloaded, short attention span, you know, society to get to the meat of what's important and how you do it and how you can share with them your audience. And so I'm going to share with you, we all know the adage, right? What's a picture worth? A thousand words. They want to yeah. know what a video is worth. Gartner research has actually thousand? calculated this. What was your guess? I said 60,000. I think you just said something about 60,000 not long ago. So I guess we pro no, I, that's, I, we I, process I this visual content more. Uh, but okay. it's actually 1.8 million based on the a picture's worth a thousand words wow. frame rate and things they calculated 1.8 million words for a video, which is why video is so powerful. And that's you know, why I thankfully do it. So, my last tip is create visual content. So, when you're thinking of that ad, that reel obviously it's already visual. How can you make whatever yeah. messaging you're doing more visual? Um, how can you make your slides? less texty and more visual you know i hope you've seen my slides are pretty text heavy um so mm -hmm. and then how about creating a series i have a bunch of content pillars and again i'm running a book about this you know i have a series of marketing dad jokes i have a series of quick questions i have a series of quotes i have a series of time lapse videos you want to start to batch your content in a way that you're telling similar stories along the way and it doesn't always have to be the story of you know, that I explained in the story pad. That's a piece of it. You can use things to share your value that's more narrative, more visual. And my goal is to, whatever you're doing now, do more of the storytelling, do more of visual and understanding the science behind it and how it's going to be effective for communicating yeah. in a way that's going to connect you with more people. I love it. I love it. Do you? I'm looking at another question in the comments here. Do you have any examples yes. of... Um, grabbing attention pretty quickly as you start to tell a story. I know you talked about, let me tell you a story or, you know, I'm, let me share a story about, is there anything that you can put at the beginning so, of a story that would grab attention quickly? Yeah. And I take this from a presentation and, you know, I know you and I both uh, professional speakers and one of the ways they talk about grabbing people's attention early on, I'll give you two, you know, tips that people mm -hmm. have found really successful. One is a, a kind of shocking statistic. You know, yep. if you think about story, you know, if I were to start and just say, telling a story is 22 times more likely to get people to remember your message. Something along, or, you know, or visual content is processed 60,000 times faster than text. That is a stat that people probably aren't used to hearing and it, it will intrigue them. The other tip that I often say to people is you ask a question. So we use that problem version have you been yeah. injured in an accident? Are you frustrated with fill in the blank? Because you're right. bringing up that problem right away. By asking, you want to ask a question to grab someone's attention because they, if their answer is yes, they're going to pay attention. So are you getting married? Something similar. If you're not getting married, don't bother. But if I say, <laughs> are you getting married? Well, come yeah. to the jewelers and get the best diamond ring, blah, blah, blah. My point is that that's why you start with knowing your audience and what matters 
to them. Yeah, statistics and questions are two ways that you can quickly get people's attention. But what I would say is those statistics and those questions have to be relevant to your audience. Yes. So that if you're giving a statistic about um, bicycles, you know, oh, we sell 6 million bicycles every five minutes or, and you're not in the market for a bicycle, not a very good statistic. You know, right. if you're getting some, you know, do you like salty snacks? You know, and you're like, no, I don't. Okay, well, if you think your audience likes salty snacks and they don't, you're going to have a disconnect. So that's why, yeah. yes, statistics and questions will be good ways to capture attention, but it has to be in a way that is relevant and valuable for the audience, which is why knowing yeah. your audience is so important. Yeah, uh, we're, we're just about at the time to wrap up, and I want you to share how people can get in touch with you. But before we do that, I want to I want to ask you one last question here. One of the struggles that a lot of people have is in the business or in the workplace, they struggle with finding stories or they feel like they've got to find the perfect story. And, and they're like, I don't have all of this, this content. Where do I, where do I find stories that are, as you talked about, relevant to what my audience wants to know? They're everywhere. And so I'll tell you a good place to start for people. One mm -hmm. is testimonials. So success stories. Those are great stories. You've already served someone well. Yeah. So tell about, a, I had a customer who came in who was really struggling with this thing and we were able to help them. Better mm -hmm. yet, have that person, that customer testimony. That's why they're so powerful because you're having someone else give testimony about your business. So I think that's a really powerful way in order to let people know, so, so just think about your customers that you've helped. Who have you helped? Or how can you help? So tell right. a story about how you can help. Maybe it's not a real person. Maybe you're a startup and you haven't helped anyone yet. But share the story of this is how we serve people. Again, thinking about the audience. If you know your audience has these issues, start with what's going to matter to them. Yeah. Fantastic. So just how, how do we get in touch with you? I mean, I, I loved everything that you've shared and and I know that you are an expert at what you do. So if people are looking to get a little bit more information, looking to dive deeper into their storytelling cache and capability, how do they get in touch with you? I'm going to, yeah, I'll sh I'm going to share a slide in a second, but before I'm going to share one other slide because uh, yeah, there's my email that, that the host just put out there. But if you share the slide, I don't want to forget about this, which is our giveaway. So I don't want to forget yes. about that. So if you want to be entered to have the three lucky people are going to get a logo animation. All you need to do is drop me an email at jeffrey at nine.tomia.com with the subject line, big view. And I will then randomly pick three people and reach back out to you. And you can send me a, your logo graphic and I'll turn it into an animated, beautiful piece of content. So I wanna make sure that people saw this and were able to know this is how you do it. Maybe take a screenshot of whatever you do, but just send me a, a big view in the subject line and you'll be entered in to win a logo animation. So I want to make sure I got that. And then if you want to connect with me, so as a speaker, visual producer, again, email is really good. That QR code on screen is a direct link to my LinkedIn. Feel free to connect and link with me. I'm on LinkedIn. There's my phone number. There's my email. If you have questions and I can be helpful, if you think that there's some way I can bring this message that's going to be powerful for your organization or your association, feel free to get in touch. Um, do I have time for one more story, Robert? Oh, yes, you do. All right. I want to go back to the beginning, to our good friend Charles. Now, Charles, as you may know, is my grandfather, the Honorable Judge Charles Klein, but I refer to him as Papa. And I want to tell you a story about when my other grandfather passed away. My maternal, this is my paternal grandfather. When my maternal grandfather passed away, I was 12. And my grandfather, Charles, was friendly with my other grandfather, Bill. And so we went to the funeral. And it was very sad. And, you know, I wasn't as close with Bill as I was to, you know, and I looked up to my grandfather, Charles, who I idolized him. He was, you know, larger than life. And after the, the memorial service, we we're kind of out in the cemetery and I saw my grandfather kind of walk a few paces away from me. And then something really startling happened, which is I heard my grandfather laughing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm 12 years old. I, I, I knew pretty well, like, you don't laugh at a, at a, a 
funeral. Like there's something wrong there. And so I turned to him and I said, Pop Pop, what's so funny? And slowly he turned with tears in his eyes and said, I wasn't laughing. And it was the only time I had ever seen my grandfather cry. Mm -hmm. And it changed the way I looked at him from that, it changed our relationship. Because instead of having up on this pedestal, he became human. And to me, that is what the power of stories is. It's a way to humanize our interactions. It's a way for us to understand and connect with one another. Because for me, you know, we're all out there in the world trying to connect, trying to make these relationships, these meaningful connections. And what I believe is that story is really the way because stories connect our humanity. And that's the message I hope you'll get from this. I really believe that. And then you ask one other question, which I always answer, don't look to, for the perfect story. <laughs> Take your story and make it perfect. Fantastic. That's all I got. That's the end. Thank you very much. That QR code is to a four question survey about this presentation. I would be uh, appreciative if you guys would just take it. It'll take a minute. Uh, I love to get feedback from people sometimes, especially on virtual events. It's hard to know how things are resonating. Uh, so if you take a moment. And Robert, thank you so much for having me. And Big View, thank you. This has been great. I hope you found this valuable. And I hope your audience found it valuable. Fantastic. Well, listen, everybody, thanks so much for asking great questions. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for just being here again for another Big View session. If you are not subscribed to the Big View YouTube channel, make sure that you do so. If you're not connected with Big View, you want to get on the mailing list so that you can get notified when fantastic sessions like this are going live. I believe the next one is Tuesday, May 2nd. So make sure that you have that on your calendar and you're locked in so that you can upgrade your business, upgrade your life, upgrade your knowledge, and just become better, even 1% better, utilizing your story and Big View. We'll see you next time. Storytellers, thanks for joining me on the session. I'm so pumped that we were connected and I hope you found real value in what was shared. Do me a favor, I wanna continue the journey with you. Head on over to RK3 That's Me. That's right, RK3 That's Dot Me. On that page, you'll find all of the different places on the interwebs that you can get connected with me. And there are also some great resources for you to download. Download them because they're designed to help you become better presenters, better communicators, and video storytellers. And that's what we need more of in this world, right? <laughs> Listen, get connected, go to RK3, that's me. I'm RK3, and I hope to see you in my inbox.